What's up everyone, Enclactivic here, um, bringing you guys my what's in my camera bag video leading up to and through 2020. Hopefully this video explains everything and leaves you without any questions at the end. This is all my video and photo gear that I use, especially when I'm traveling and a couple extra things that are in my camera bag. This is something I've been wanting to do for quite a while now. Hope you guys enjoy. Uh, if you do, don't forget to leave a like on the video and uh, subscribe if you haven't already. So the main bag that I've been using up until 2020 has been the ProMaster Cityscape. Um, it's just kind of a bag I like the look of. Um, I was looking for a camera bag. Uh, I didn't look too much into it. I know I want a brand one that kind of like had this look to it. It's not the highest quality bag, but it does a good job uh, protecting camera gear from getting wet, uh, holds everything I need. Um, there's a few things that I would like different about it, but overall, I've been enjoying it for probably the past two years. A big thing uh, going along with my camera bag, and as you guys know, I do do a lot of traveling. So the other bag I bring with me almost everywhere for however long is the Greatest Ultimate Bag. Uh, greatest Ultimate Bag sent this to me, um, must have been three years ago. Don't quote me on that. <laughs> but before I bought my like actual camera bag, I actually used to like put all my camera gear in here. Um, I just wrap all my lenses and cameras in extra clothes when I travel. I will be doing a full Greatest Ultimate Bag review that you can look forward to see in the future. So big thing, cameras. For video, the Panasonic GH5S. It can shoot at Full HD up to 240 frames per second or in 4K at 60 frames per second. I absolutely love this thing and this is how I've been shooting all my slow-mo video since the 2019 World Under 24 Ultimate Championships. It's got a flip LCD screen as well as focus peaking. Uh, focus peaking is a huge thing for me when I'm filming. It allows me to keep everything sharp and in focus. Unfortunately, the low light on this thing is not the best, but I've got a couple hacks to get around that and as well as the lens I use, we can work with it. When it comes to Ultimate, and my highlight videos, I 99% of the time never have to color correct my footage because I just love the way it looks. Big reason I bought this guy, uh, because of the red button on the top. I like red shiny buttons, so yeah, that's a selling point, right? I would put this camera in one of the top best investments I've ever made. It does great in bad weather and in cold conditions. I have never had a problem with it freezing up or uh, if it gets too wet, so I absolutely love it. I also do beat the living crap of this thing. There's no dents or scratches, so I'm super thrilled with what Panasonic's done with this Panasonic GH5S. One of the downsides to this camera is the photo capabilities. I am not a fan of the photos. That being said, I do not use any native lenses. I only use Canon or third party lenses with an adapter. Don't take my word for photos, it's just my personal preference and if you're going to be using it with an adapter, I don't think it's the tool if you're looking for photos. In order to use my Canon and other EF mount glasses, I have to use an adapter. My adapter of choice is the Metabone Speed Booster XL. I use the Metabone Speed Booster XL because one, it gives me an extra stop of light as well, the crop factor is a 0.64, so it actually widens up the crop factor other than other cameras and lets in more light and things, science happens. It's awesome. Um, it, it, it lets me it lets me shoot in low light. So if I have, for example, a lens that is a 2.8, it will actually open it up and let in as much light as a 1.8 lens. So it is an absolute killer when it comes to low light conditions and I love it. It's, it's a great investment. There are other Metabone speed boosters. Um, this one's the most expensive one, but I think it's very well worth the extra bit of money. My main photography camera is a Canon 5D Mark IV. It shoots 30.2 megapixel photos at seven frames per second in RAW. That's how I shoot when I'm shooting ultimate or pretty much anything. I never take it out of burst mode. Um, it's, it's an absolute tank, especially in low light. I've been using this camera for a number of years. Um, the full frame sensor on it is absolutely fantastic. Um, I would recommend this to anyone uh, if it's in your price point. The focusing on this camera is absolutely insane. It's very quick, um, it is extremely durable and weather tight. Uh, fun fact, I've actually dropped this particular camera 
into a lake, it still works. Well, I don't recommend tossing it into a body of water. It's, I've done it for you. It's amazing. If you are considering buying this camera for photography purposes, I highly recommend it. Video wise, if you are okay with just 60 frames per second, uh, full HD, this, this will do the trick for you. Most of the time when I'm just going around, especially when I'm traveling, uh, the lens that I stick on this bad boy is a 24 millimeter 1.4, which you're looking at, um, which you're using to, which I'm using to look at me right now. It's just a great all around lens. Uh, I love using it for landscape portraits, uh, just kind of like anything when I'm just walking around town traveling. Um, it stays on my 5D Mark IV unless I plan on switching to the 7200. In the shallow depth of field at 1.4 is a dream. I love 1.4 lenses. Unfortunately, they're usually pretty expensive, but it, this is one that I'm super happy to have. This is the Canon 70-200 2.8 version 2. This is my pride and joy. This is the lens I have used, um, whether rented or now owned. It has image stabilization, which does help reduce in the shaky, especially the the quick movements I do while filming Ultimate. It is beautiful in low light and extremely durable. Uh, like I said with all my other gear, I do beat the living crap out of it uh, and it survived a lot. It's sharp corner to corner, the colors coming through it, the light coming through it is absolutely gorgeous. An extra lens I will take around with me a lot is the Liowa 12mm 2.80D. Um, this is a fully manual lens, which means both the aperture ring as well as the focus ring are manual. This is a lens I will use mainly for the opening ceremonies um, at World Championships. Um, it is just a fantastic lens. It has zero distortion. So when I do want to use it for either architecture, photography, or just going around where there's a lot of straight lines, there's no curve or distortion in those lines once you get out to the edges. I do also use this lens a lot when I'm doing landscapes so I can get a lot of the foreground coming in below me. I use the DJI Mavic Air. This is a super lightweight drone that is capable of shooting in 4K. It can fit into your camera bag uh, with all the batteries, chargers, and the drone itself. It doesn't take up much weight or room. If I can't fly, it's not that big of a deal uh, because it doesn't take up any, any real estate in my camera bag. The 4K video on this thing is a lot of fun to use. Um, the one downside to it is the low light, especially when it comes to photos. I've only enjoyed a couple of the photos I've taken with this drone, and when it does take a nice photo, they're awesome, but most of the time, they're just mediocre. I do see myself upgrading to the DJI Mavic Pro 2 uh, in the coming future. <laughs> a big thing for me, I like batteries. I love having access to power. It's very important for me to have all my stuff charged all the time, so I'll usually have three to four batteries for both my GH5S and my 5D Mark IV, as well as one to two chargers for each of these cameras. I like to make sure everything's juiced up and ready to go all the time. It's a big pet peeve of mine when my gear is not charged, so I always make sure that it's fully charged and ready to go for the entire day. These batteries are absolutely awesome. I'll usually only go through one to two of them for an eight hour day of filming and, or photography, and when it gets to those 12 hour days, I'll usually run through them all and it's, I always keep them on charge in case I do need to go through more. In terms of storage, uh, something that may surprise a lot of you is my SD cards or lack of SD cards. I actually just use micro SD cards. Micro SD cards are actually my choice because frankly, they work great on all my cameras. On the off chance that I only have one card with me, this this micro SD card will work on my 5D Mark IV, my GH5S, my GoPro, and my drone. So I'm never without any cards. Although I do have to make sure I'm getting the, I believe they're called Class 10. Uh, there is designated by a little U and a 3. It's only these cards that will write fast enough for the first speed of my camera as well as the slow-mo video I do. They're only about $40 Canadian, so I think it's a huge W. And until I see a reason to change up, I'm going to keep using these. Now going from my camera uh, into longer storage, I just use the Western Digital My Passport. This is the four terabyte version. Um, I love colorful things, so this comes in all different colors. At the beginning of each year, I do buy a four terabyte hard drive, uh, one for the main and then one for the backup, and it'll usually last me for the full year. 
it's not the most robust thing I've uh, out of the 10 that I have only one has given out on me but in order to protect it I just buy these pouches off of Amazon I believe they're about 20 or 30 dollars Canadian you can have the cords on the top a couple extra SD cards in here um, they zip up they're wire resistant so I have no complaints here um, once I can comfortably afford some of those more robust solid state drives I'll be buying those frankly this is a great budget option for a lot of people um, you get tons of storage and it's like as long as you take care of them they're gonna last as for tripods uh, sorry I don't have it in front of me uh, the camera um, that I'm filming on is holding the tripod it is a Manfrotto 190 go it's just like with one of the cheapest video heads you can get it's a bit heavy um, down the road I would like to switch to carbon fiber but carbon fiber tripods are stupid expensive so uh, I'll be sticking with this bad boy for a while. I use a 2019 15 inch MacBook Pro. The specs are, it is a 2.4 gigahertz, eight core i9 um, with 32 gigabyte RAM, um, Pro Vega, or what? To be honest with you, I have no idea about anything with, um, with laptops or computers. I'm beyond useless. I spend all my time learning about cameras. I just want to give a huge shout out to Marquez. I uh, chatted with him a little bit and he basically told me everything that I would need in a laptop and gave me a suggestion of what laptop I should buy so that I would be able to use the cameras I am using as well as what I will be looking forward to be doing more of in the future. Marquez, uh, on the off chance you're watching, thank you so much for your help with this laptop. It's been an absolute dream and a powerhouse. Other accessories I have in my camera bag or what I carry in my greatest bag for my camera equipment, it's just one of those like generic bags from those luggage stores that you see in malls. Inside, I'll have my laptop charger, extra batteries, random cords, extra propellers, chargers, um, just all the random cords that sometimes I need, sometimes I don't need. Um, I keep my parks pass in there for when I go visit national parks. Ooh, hey look, SD card, I've been looking for you. And I also always keep my travel adapters in here. Um, because I do travel a lot, I keep everything for every country in this bag. In this bag. It's important to always have always have those on you so you're not, stuck, you're not stuck without power. Big thing I use, power strip. I don't see enough people traveling with these. When you when you do go to other countries, it's great to only use one adapter, uh, plug in, then you can charge a bunch of stuff. So when I go to tournaments, there's usually a table for media and the real estate for outlets and charging things is pretty limited. To be able to have my own power strip is a huge plus to making sure all my gear is always charged all the time. In terms of headphones, a lot of you are probably going to hate me when you see this. Um, I still use the Apple headphones that came with my computer. Um, <laughs> um, these, I don't know, they're not great. They get the job done. I do have bigger ears, so a lot of the over-ear headphones do get quite uncomfortable for wearing them for long periods of time. I'm often editing six to eight hours. Um, and these are the only ones I've really found that have been that comfortable for me. Because I use a MacBook, I have two different dongles. This one is the actual Apple dongle. Uh, it's actually not too good. The connection's not consistent. It also costs $85. The other dongle I bought was $25 off of Amazon and it's, um, it's actually the one I'm, I'm using right now uh, so that I can have like more consistent feed. This guy's just kind of like a backup. Of course, because I travel a lot, Passport, I love collecting stamps. They're, it's really fun, it's a really cool way to look back on like all my travels throughout the years. Bit of a weird one to keep in your camera bag, but a fresh pair of socks. It's so nice to be able to, be able to change your socks partway through the day or at the end of the day. Right before I get on the flight, I'll usually switch in a fresh pair of socks and flip flops and go on the flight that way. That way it's super comfortable. Small things, obvious things, uh, camera cloth uh, keeps lenses clean. Glasses, not normal glasses. These are blue light glasses. Um, I do stare at my computer screen or when I'm on airplanes at the monitor in front of you. It really helps, helps with eye strain. Um, I'd recommend anyone getting these. I just bought the, like Amazon's choice. They are about $25. Um, 
I highly, highly recommend this if you do any type type of editing. Bit of a weird one, nail clippers. I hate working or doing anything with long nails. Uh, I can't sleep, I, it just bothers me more than, than anything in the world, so I like to make sure my nails are cut short. On the hygienic side, uh, deodorant, uh, I'm not sponsored. Uh, I wish I was sponsor, sponsor me. I always make sure I have deodorant on me. I hate smelling bad. I keep a power bank on me. Um, this will charge my phone about uh, twice through full. In my camera bag is also this little container full of uh, various pills. It includes Tylenol, caffeine, melatonin, ginger pills, and Imodium. When I'm traveling, a lot of times I don't have the extra day or two to adjust to the jet lag. The caffeine pills as well as the melatonin to kind of keep, get my sleep schedule on like on point right away. I do not recommend doing it that way. It's, it's something that is um, pretty necessary for me. Other things, uh, Imodium and Tylenol as well as ginger pills. Uh, those are in case I'm not physically feeling very well. The three of those pills for various different reasons will help me get through a tournament day of shooting. Uh, so I don't have to like go home or rest. Uh, I can usually power through it. You should all know hydration is the key. It's the key to everything. Like I always try to make, keep myself very well hydrated. Uh, I love nice cold water. This is just one of like the insulated mugs from Starbucks. Um, Starbucks, please sponsor me. Pedialyte. If you don't know what Pedialyte is, it's a, it's a miracle for just someone who's going around like a photographer like myself. I don't need tons of sugar throughout the day, uh, but I do need all the electrolytes because I am sweating. I go with Pedialyte, adds a little bit of boost of flavor to my water. It's huge, it keeps me going, I love it. I'll always keep as many of these packs as I can in my bag at the same time. One of the last things is business cards. Business cards are something I've been meaning to have for a long time. On my card, I've got my website, Instagram, uh, YouTube, and email. I highly recommend uh, if you want to expand your business and whatnot, get business cards, um, keep a stack of them in your camera bag and just give them out whenever you can. Thank you all so much for watching. Um, this is totally new to me. Um, it's something I've been wanting to do for a couple years now. Um, I've kind of like got this setup that I want to, that I've been wanting to get done for probably three years now. If there's anything that you want to learn about, maybe some editing stuff, maybe photography stuff. I'm a nerd. I love talking about this stuff. It makes me happier than anything in the world. Don't forget to like the video. Um, drop a comment down. Let me know what you want to see in future videos and subscribe if you haven't already. I'm in Kalakovic. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Peace.